So error boundary is is, is a uh, it's a part of higher order component. So this is nothing but uh, uh, some of the errors happen. So uh, during this class, we got multiple errors right in the console. So at that time, uh, we what I do, I I go back to the code and I just do some changes and I come back here. Uh, it will uh, resolve. But uh, if the developer forgot uh, forgot to uh, fix the errors and uh, he push the code into the line, uh, the production right at that time the page may broken. Uh, that in there, there will be a big problem. So in these kind of scenarios, we need to use uh, error boundaries. So without error boundaries, we can't do much things. Uh, we can't able to handle uh, smoothly in the error error sites. So for that, we need to use. Uh, we, we are. I'm going to explain how to create error boundaries for the particular things. Okay. So that's what from the error boundaries. So how to create error boundary for the component? So uh, we already seen in the last session of uh, get derived state from error. And uh, component did catch. So these are the two lifecycle methods from the class component. With the help of these two things, uh, we are going to create error boundaries. Clear everything. So now here error boundary. Okay, yes. So here I'm going to create a class component. Um. So uh, there is an error boundary. So we are naming this error boundary and. Okay, so forget about this render method. So as I told, uh, to do build the to build the error boundary, we need uh, these two functions. So copy this function and put it here, and open bracket to console the error. What are the error you are capture? And the second one is the component did catch and console log error and error info. Right. So uh, we are creating these two function to capture the particular error. Um, after that, I will tell you how to handle this thing. So just copy this error boundary. How to use this error boundary to other components? Right. So for this, uh, what I do, I'm going to create new component for the product list. So product list for JS, it may be the function component. Um, create create functional component. Um, go to the product list. So. Here I want to show uh, some of the products. So const product equal to here I am having the name, the product, um, some uh, this product, and uh, some price will be something. So similar manner, I am creating three product. So there will be test one, test two, test three. Right. So we have the three products, and uh, in this products, wrongly uh, instead of name, I put as label name. So this is uh, this is the actual problem. So save it, and as usual, if you want to list the product, then we need to use map function. Everybody we know products dot map of product slash index and Inside that, uh, we are we are going to use another uh, another component called the product. Right? Inside the product, we need inside the product for the product we need to pass some prop. Uh, so it it may be called as data and the product. And inside here, uh, we are setting key for the index. Right. So this is actual component, and we need to create a product. So we need to create product component. So in under this thing, so product on JS. This is the component to uh, create a UI for product. So React create function component and product. Okay. So here we are receiving the prop as a data from here, right? So this is the product component, and we are receiving the data as a prop. The data have each product data. So here import that. So we have the product, and inside that, inside the product, we have each product class name, product, and inside that we have two things: one is name, and another one is price. So here we are using uh, h1, h4 tag for the name, uh, which may be data dot name, and h6 for Price data dot price. Right. 
So save it, save both. And this product list we need to show. So app.js, give this, put here, more and more things, save it. Go back, go back to the browser. So here you can see uh, we are showing the product list. So it's showing product, uh, first product information and the third part, third product information, but second product is not showing here. So this will be a big problem when the client sees uh, I give you three product, but uh, the second product name is not showing there. So what I do uh, for the safer side. So if, if the name is there, then we can print the name else. What I need to do, we need to throw the error. So throw new error. Product is not found. Uh, error. Uh, error now is equal to function set there. Throw the error. Right, save it. So what it will happen? So it will throw the error. So so why because here you can see product is not found. That's the error. Exactly we are throwing from here. Why because there is some label missing here in the product list. So instead of label, if you if you put save name and refresh, it, there is no error. But in some case, maybe the JSON or the data mismatch from the API. So at that time, uh, the the entire page will broken, right? So for that, I'm throwing the error. What is the error? The product is not found. That's error. And what's the suggestion? Uh, so here we need to use the error boundary to capture the particular thing, and it should not be broken the page. So that is this is the actual use case. This is very simple. So I hope you everybody understood the use case. So we have the JSON and the JSON is not in the similar manner. When we are, go, when we are going to assess a list of products, when we, we want to show showcase the list of product at that time, some of the product mismatched in the key side, right? Some of the name, this is key, the label, this is name. Uh, so this kind of problems happen. We need to use error boundary, right? So what I do, we have the error boundary, copy this error boundary and go to this product list and each product will be under error boundary. So this error boundary, will help us to find where is the exact problem and it never disturb other products. So save it, go back to here, uh, I forgot to import error boundary. So now save it and go back, refresh the page, uh, each child unique key pop. So key index, save it and go back. So we have the error boundary and here uh, what we need to do is first we, uh, is it directly throw the error, but that's not the case. We need to uh, check whether the uh, error is happened or not. Else we don't need to throw any error. Right? For that um, we need to use state, right? So this dot state now drops here. So this is a class component. That's what I'm using as constructor. So this dot state uh, has error. If that's an error, then it will uh, send back error. Else it won't send any error. So initially it will say, I just tell uh, error is not there. At that I'm telling as a default value. So uh, we have the error boundary for each product. So uh, the problem is we are having the label uh, is mismatched with the name field. And what are the problem happened inside the product at that time it will capture from the error boundary, right? So it will enter here. And after that, we have the constructor. In the constructor side, um, we are, uh, so we have the super props. Uh, the super is nothing but a super class will help us to uh, pass the data uh, from one component to another component. It, it will help us to allow the uh, information, uh, allow the props, allow the properties uh, to receive from other side. And uh, this is, these two functions we already need, already, uh, already seen in the, uh, already seen in the presentation. So here, we have the derived state and whenever the error happened at that time, we are capturing the particular error, right? And we are setting into the particular uh, state. And after that, here we, this, uh, this inside the uh, component it catch, we have the two, uh, if the error capture here and we are setting into the state. So once this error point is successfully uh, retrieved or uh, captured the error, then we are setting into the state and we have the conditions here. If the state has the error, then it will return the problem, uh, something, uh, there is some problem with that, or something went wrong, uh, like that. Something went wrong, wrong for this product. 
So like that, you can send back. And after that, along with this, what are the children you are received, right? Uh, what is children here? So children is nothing but the, when, if this error boundary is apparent, then what are the things uh, inside that, that all things are the child. So in this scenario, um, this children is product. So it will send back the products. So if the error happened, it will send a P tag. If the error not happened, then it will send back the current product. So I'll save it everything, go back, refresh the page. So forget about this thing, this everything, we are actually throw the error here uh, in the product. So we throw the error. So if we don't want to throw error, then no problem. It will be taking care of that. But as a, as a developer, we need to throw the error. Then only we can able to fix the particular issue, right? So uh, in the product list, we're showing the proper uh, the proper uh, product information and the second product have something uh, problem with its data. So that's why it's showing uh, something went wrong uh, for this project. Check with that. So it will uh, this will help us to uh, track the uh, issue. So the user will the developer will directly jump into the product list and he compare with other products. So everything's right. Then one why they have pro why the problem happened. So he changed this name the label into name and refresh the page and he can able to see the things. So uh, with, without error boundary also, we can able to have, we can able to handle these kind of issues. But if you are using error boundary, then the, then the page won't break anything. For example, I just to hide this, I save it and go back here. So currently this is normal one, save it, go back. The page is broken, right? So for just only one, uh, the particular label or name is mismatched. But user can able to understood from the uh, console side, but the uh, end user can able to can be disturbed uh, for the visualization here. The end user can't able to see anything. Somebody say if they have the problem with the one product, then why are not uh, showing other products, right? So this kind of uh, this, this kind of questions came from the peoples. So at that time we need to use error boundaries. If you use error boundary here, uh, if you use error boundary, then obviously it won't disturb the uh, peoples. It obviously showing other product informations except the, the except this thing. Uh, you can say you can you can I can tell instead of uh, these kind of messages, uh, the product is not available. Uh, product not available now. Like that, you can send back, and the end user can able to okay. Uh, now the current this product is not available now. That's what they are not uh, showing the particular product information.